Hello, good morning and welcome back to the fish locker out on the boat. It is an absolute glorious day in here. I feel like I don't even need this hat. It is lovely and sunny, but out there there is going to be a bit of swell I reckon. I've had some bad weather, it's the first time I've been on the boat in ages. I'm going to have some residual swell, but I thought this was too good an opportunity to miss. The reason why I've come to this little area here is because there was a load of birds working. And as soon as I've got here, I can see why all that is fish. Now yeah, look, it's a big shoal of fish. I'm thinking that's probably going to be pilchards. That's fine for me, I'm going to put some sabikis on, try and feather up some pilchards or some joey mackerel. Or I might try and drift in with a live bit over a reef on a float. We're just going to have to figure it out when we get there. If I get out and the swell's too strong, I'm going to have to spend time fishing right tight and short. Yeah. Just excited to be out on the boat again. Let's go. Little tiny pilchards. Now they are perfect for a live bait for a bass. There you are, pilchard and a joey. There are half a dozen of them and we'll start moving over to the reef. This feels more mackerel-y. Yep. That's what we're after. Now that we've got someone in, I'll make my way to the reef. What I'm gonna do is I will I'll rig up the float setup and I'll show you before I send it over the side. Very simple though. Yeah, good to know that the bait are here. That's a good sign. It's not too bad the swelling here. The float setup that I've got, all I'm doing is I'm running it on a conflict rod, I've got a little spin fisher. A large float, a locked in lead, and about say three or four feet of 15 pound floor row ending in a circle. This is a 6 o mutsu circle. And all I'm going to do with one of the live baits is when I can select a good one, that's a good one, is just thread the live bait onto the hook. Now, when you're doing this, you need to be careful because you want it to be a live bait, not a dead bait. Go, let the float drift away behind the boat and keep an eye out and see if it bobs down. There's two types of bites you can get with floats a positive bite or a negative bite. Positive bite means that a fish comes up, gets hold of the bait, and goes down in the water so the float goes straight down. A negative bite or a drop back bite means that the float, instead of sitting up like that, lays flat. That happens when a fish comes up and picks up the bait and the weight and comes up towards the surface. So there's no weight on the float, so the float lays. Yeah, drag's all right. Sit that in there. And at the same time, I'm going to fish with a little jig on a little jigging rod and a fathom low profile. Just going to jig around near the bottom to see if there's any, any pollock, any cord, any, any wrasse. On the live bait float, I'm hoping for things like bass and pollock. On the jig, it's going to be more like wrasse and possibly codlings if they're in the there. The area of reef that I'm drifting over is very up and down. So I need to keep an eye on it because whatever depth that float set, if it's set at 20 feet, 30 feet, 40 feet, whatever I've set it at. If, <laughs> if the ground is shallower, that's going to snag up. Missed it. The beauty of fishing a live bit on a float like that is 
once you set it away it pretty much fishes itself so it allows you to fish two rods because you can fish you can't fish two lures at the same time because you can't fish two rods and you can't really mean but a float like that can sit and fish Whatever this is, I think I foul hooked it. <laughs> no, I didn't, it was just starfish. Yeah, I'm sorry about the sun, but you saw there that I started off this drift, sat perfectly. So the sun was facing behind the camera, and all that's happened is we've just spun straight round. Yeah. Carry on this drift for maybe another 20 yards, and I'm gonna have to spin round anyway. But yeah, that's all I'm doing. I'm just running drifts over bits of reef. Now, I'm going to change where on the reef that I'm fishing until I find the fish. Because the fish might be on the north side of the reef, the south side of the reef, east to west. You just have to experiment until you find them. Yeah, I think there's a lot of mackerel down there. Because they keep hitting that little jig. Reason why I fish a treble on the bottom, quite a light treble is because when you're fishing over a reef, you are going to snag up, you are going to catch onto the bottom. And rather than fish assists, assists are really strong. Yeah, assist hooks are really strong. So if you snag up into a rock, you, <laughs> you stand a good chance of losing the rig, losing the jig. But a treble hook, quite often a light one, they'll bend out. Oh. It wasn't a mackerel, it was a scad, a horse mackerel. Oh, that's a fish. That feels like a nice fish. Oh no, my float's down as well. I think we've got a fish on the float as well. Huh. Yeah, we have. We've got a fish on the float as well. Huh. This, is, this feels like a good fish, this. And that fish that's on the floor might be a nice one too. Looks like it is. <laughs> this is where you could do with two people. Oh, this is a nice pollock. nice pollock. A very nice pollock. And at the same time there's a fish on here as well. <laughs> that worked perfectly. Both rigs picked up fish. Here. <laughs> well, the pilchard, the live bait pilchard, picked up a nice pollock. This one's actually not very big though. That circle hook is just, just inside of his mouth. There you go. Drop this guy down in the live bird tank. Give him a moment to calm down. But the fish that I caught on the jig, oh my. <laughs> I'm 
Yeah, the pollock that I caught on the jig. My goodness, that is a much better fish. That is an absolute stunner of a pollock. There's the hook. And a little treble hook. People will say, oh, they'll bend out. That there is, I would give that, that'll be eight to 10 pound, that fish. That is an absolute chunk. And that little spinner there is the one that took it. See the treble hook just inside of its mouth. Now, you'll see me unhooking fish when it's a single hook, just with my hands. I won't do it with a treble, just because there's more chance of you getting it stuck in you. There you go, there's the, there's the hook out. Now this, you can see by the belly on this fish, it's got a right kite on it. Got a real, a real heavy gut. This fish is full of roe. This fish is about to spawn. This fish is going back. <laughs> Didn't even hesitate for a second. That, that was a stunner of a fish that. Now, I wouldn't mind taking a fish for the table, but that one there was a prime breeding stock fish and you could see how fat its gut was. It was full of roe, full of eggs. This is the time of year when they're coming up to spawning. They're gonna be spawning in in probably a couple of weeks to a month. Now a smaller fish, if for whatever reason, if it won't if it won't survive being released, if it takes a hook too deep, for for anything like that, I will gladly take it because pollock is delicious. But at this time of year like this, if I can release those real big ones, those real big breeders, yeah I'm happy to do that. If I could choose a couple of fish to take for the table today it would be a, a pollock of about four pounds and a bass of about four pounds. Right. Now that that pollock's calmed down in a live bait tank, I'll unhook that and I'll, I'll get that one shot back as well. Whew. Yeah, brilliant. Just exactly as I'd said, you can fish two rods at the same time when you're fishing one on the float. And all I've done there was I sat it in a... Show you. Just sat it in a holder like that. By setting the right drag, all that had happened there was, because it's a circle hook, the fish had hooked itself, and as soon as it tried to pull off, it just pulled a little bit of drag away. I dealt with the bigger fish on the little jig. That was the perfect rig to catch that on, a little, little light plane rig. Yeah. Go back and try that again. <laughs> it's amazing how a couple of good fish can sit, can change your mood. I was already in a good mood just because of, just because of the conditions out here today. But yeah, that's that's brilliant. That there you go. There's a the circle hook out. There you go. There you go. Perfect. Let's go around and try that again. There we go. We'll run that drift again. Totally through this live bait float rig. It's not all tangled up. Yeah, like I say, just a big sliding float. I have got a locked in lead. The size of the lead <laughs> relates to the size of the float. Bigger the float, bigger the lead. Four foot of 15 pound fluoro ending in a circle hook. And all I'll do is take when I can catch one. There we go. Take one of the live baits that I caught earlier. Now, like I say, you want to be careful when you're hooking it up because. You don't want to kill it, it wants to remain a live bait. So, you want to go no further back than between the eyes. If you go any further back than that, you're going to kill it. See if I can't get you to see that one, Mr. There And at the same time, all I'm doing is I'm fishing a little jig like this. This is a little mimic speed jig. Now, tell me that doesn't just look like a little pilchard. All I'm doing is playing match the hatch. What's present down there, I'm, I'm imitating it with that lure. 
we're on a slightly different drift this time. Started in roughly the same place, but the drift is slightly different. Ooh, missed it. <laughs> that was a smashing dive. That was a pollock. Pollock, I don't know if you saw from the fight of the last fish that I had on this rod, but they do like crashing dives. Fallen Rass hook up tight on the bottom, and they're like just dog for the bottom. They're quite dirty fighters. Bass kite around, and then when they come to the surface, they thrash about, they give like head shakes, whereas Pollock dive and dive. Yeah, <laughs> it looks like moving to that other part of the reef hasn't done me any favours. Yeah, to hook up into two nice fish like that before, onto one part of the reef, all I'll do is the next... The next drift is I'll go back to the original spot that I got them two fish on. If we get into fish again then we know that's definitely where they are. Drifting at 1.3 knots. A nice drift that. Nice speed to be going at. Don't want to be going much faster. But you don't want to be going any slower than a knot, really. Got it. What? <laughs> That, that is a sea cucumber. These are also called a cotton spinner. And you will see why in a second. See if it's going to do it. Called a cotton spinner because they eject like white strings. It does just look like, like a poop, doesn't it? <laughs> yeah. It's not a fish, it's a sea cucumber. It's not going to do it. Yeah, I could see some fish messing about below the boat, which is why I brought the live bait closer. We're just not having it. Go around, try again. The reason why I like to have a float a bit of a distance away from the boat, twofold. First one is it gives me a bit of time to react. If the float's right underneath the boat, You've got no belly in line, you've got no space, you've got no time to be able to react and get up. Otherwise it's down around the boat, around the prop. Out there you've got, the line goes from the rod tip to the float and then down, so you've got a bit of time. Also, there is a certain amount of like shadow and scare and slap around the boat. Just boat noise. Watch down. That's a fish. That is a fish. Nice fish. I don't know if you saw that float go down there, but. <laughs> That was a lovely positive bite. Now there's no need to try and bully them because although although I aren't gaining any line right now, the boat's still drifting. So we're still take, we're dragging the fish with us. And you don't need to force it because you'll end up putting too much pressure on it. And like, as you're drifting and as you as you're towing the fish with you. You will end up planing the fish further up in the water. Unless the fish starts swimming towards you, in which it stays deep, it should start planing up towards the surface. This feels like a nice fish, this. <laughs> this does feel like a nice fish. Definitely bigger than the last one we had on the float. I 
I haven't seen the float come up yet. So that fish is still down there holding the float down. Just see the float now. Oh, I wanted to be back down. It's going. <laughs> God, this fish has put up a cracking fight. It is a stunning pollock. That is a cracker of a pollock, that. Don't need to tell you that is an absolute flipping jumbo. Come on, back you come. That's a double figure pollock. <laughs> that is an absolute monster. Oh Christ! Look at that! Got this little rod out of the way. That there is an absolute flipping slab. <laughs> what an absolute donkey! And there is a circle hook right in the corner of its mouth, look. Oh, look at that. Pop, out it comes. This fish, I think, has actually probably been hooked before and lost. You can see that damage on that side. For anybody worrying about me holding them, my fingers don't come in contact with the gills. You slide them up inside the gill cover. That is, that's got to be a, like a 12 to 14 pound fish. That is an absolute flipping donkey. <laughs> Look at gut on it. Look how fat it is. My goodness. Tell you what I'm going to do. I'm going to put it in the net. I'm going to keep it revived in the water and I'm going to take a photo of this because this is an absolute slab. One last look at it. What an absolute beauty. Go on, get yourself back. Well done. Now yeah, look. Straight back down. That's the beauty. That's, that's one of the things that I love about fishing in shore reefs like this. If you'd have caught a fish like that off the wrecks, it would have been dead by the time it reached the boat. Fishing like this, I managed to, I'm selective. I can choose what I want to keep and what I can't. Because the things like that, like at this moment in time, that fish there, full of raw, you saw how fat its gut was. That is prime breeding stock. Now I loved catching it and I loved seeing it and I had so much fun being there, like having it in my hands, but I get to put it back. And I could, I could pick one that was, that was not as, without using the word harmful, it doesn't make as much of a dent on the stock, so it's, it doesn't, I'm going to have to try and think of the right words to say here. What I hope transfers across in the videos, and it's something that I'm trying to teach our kids, is that you take only what you need, and you treat the natural world with respect and appreciation. Now I know, I know that they're breeding soon, and I know a big fish like that will produce exponentially more eggs than two smaller fish. So if that fish was £12, 
that fish would produce better, stronger eggs than two six pounders. So it's better to take two six pounders than one 12 pounder. So I know that I can put big fish back like that by treating them by, right? by using circle hooks, by handling them properly, by keeping them out of the water for the minimum amount of time, all that type of stuff. I can put them back and they're going to have a chance of surviving, better chance of surviving, and they're going to be able to breed and we're going to have more pollock next year. And I can still take a couple of smaller ones from a tea and it doesn't make any dent. It doesn't, it doesn't make any difference to the numbers. Yeah. I hope I've explained that right. <laughs> I, don't, I don't like trying to preach to folks because I'm, I'm the, the last one I've, I've fished commercially, I've fished all my life. Yeah. I just, I explain the way that I do things and the reasoning behind it. And if, if you agree with it, then you'll do the same. Either way, let's get around and see if we can't get another one. Yeah, also, what I should have said is, when I'm steaming back up like this, I aren't steaming straight over the same ground just because the boat will scare the fish away. Steam around, do like a big loop around. Always, always kind of makes me cringe when you see people steaming straight back over a mark. Doesn't matter if it's a wreck in like 60 metres of water, you don't steam over it, you steam round it. The beauty of using these circles, like I say, is because the fish, they pretty much hook themselves. I've cut more drifts, now the tide's starting to drop away, where um, the speed of the tide, it doesn't run at the same speed all the way through the tide. At the start of the tide and at the end of the tide it's running quite slow. Through the middle of the tide is when the tide is running its fastest. Right, so the tide is now running, yeah, about a knot. The porpoise just popped up next to the boat, that made me jump. Keep an eye on that float for me. Oh, there's a fish. This could be a ballon rasp. Oh. Picked it up on the bottom and was a completely different fight. Lovely spotty ballon. When the tide drops right off, when it slows right down, what I might do is I might make a couple of little rigs up and fish a little soft plastic gulp lure, try and pluck out a nice big ballon wrasse. When I brought that one in then, found out that actually someone had taken my live bit off the end and I hadn't seen it down. Like, could be anything, could have just missed the bite or it could have been like a bass come up and rushed it, you'd never know. But yeah, I'm out of little live bits, I'm out of pilchards now so I've had to put one of them joeys on and they are quite big. So hopefully that should mean that we'll pluck out a bigger fish. And now I don't know how that's going to be possible because we've already had some absolute stonkers. But yeah. Using bigger live baits, you generally catch less fish, but the fish you do catch are big ones. There you go. Another one of the things you've got to make sure <laughs> is that the float that you're using, the reason why I like them real big floats, is not only can you see them from a long way away, like that float could be 100 yards away and I could still see it, but also it needs to be big enough to be able to support a decent sized live bait. Got you. Got you. I saw that fish come up for that load. Now that... That is a nice sized fish to take for the table. 
that's the perfect size. Like I was saying earlier, four or five pound fish. That one, that one is my one today. <laughs> what? That was a little lure. Stunning quality, healthy fish. Just the right size. We get some, get some fantastic fillets off the side of that there. That'd feed, that'd feed all four of us actually. Yep. So I'm going to dispatch and bleed this fish now, and then fillet it off before we go in. I'm not going to show you the method that I use, but if you want to know, just Google Ike Jimmy, Ike Jimmy. Really humane, and it, it delivers the best quality meat that you can get from your fish. Kind of owe it to your quarry, don't you? You owe it, you owe it to the fish that you're killing to, to get the best from it, to get the most from it. That tide has dropped right off now. We are just coming up to well, <laughs> coming to slack water now. We have got a drift of 0.43 knots. So what I've done is I have knocked up a couple of little just one hook scratching rigs. That's just a couple of loops, a standoff boom, and these are size one o's. What I'm going to do is I'm going to put some of these little, what are they, they're turbo shrimps in pearl white. So not just normal shrimps, turbo shrimps. Yeah, I've got a few packs of these, uh, started LRF fishing with my little lad. So I picked up a few packs of soft plastics and these were like in a bundle pack that I got. I'll tell you what, they smell like, smell like <laughs> like uh, shrimp scampies that you get in pub. Scampy fries, that's what I was going to say. You get it. The reason why I can do this now is because the tide's died off, because there's no drift. If I was trying to do this in the main flood of the tide, because I'm going to be fishing right in the rocks and the weed, this is just fun fishing. I mean, yeah, I might be really lucky, I might pull out a codling or something like that, hiding in the reeds. But, the wrasse live right tight on the bottom in amongst the rocks and the weed. I was doing this when there was a lot of tide, I would just lose gear instantly. I'm thinking ballon wrasse, female and male cuckoo wrasse. Drifting at 0.1 notch. Fish have just completely dropped off the feed. Can't even pick any up on a scratching rig. I think we're going to have to move and find a tiny bit more tide. This is all about planning your day around about what the tide's doing. Knowing what the tide what the tide has an effect on the fish. I knew that the the lures and the live baits, I knew that the fish would be on the feed during the flood of the tide, during the movement of the tide. And at this slack water, you can't fish as effectively with lures unless you're fishing scratching right on the bottom. Still winkle out still will cut out the odd fish like a ballon rass from the bottom. Maybe even like a really sluggish pollock. Yeah, this is usually the time when I sit and have my sandwiches, waiting for the tide to pick back up. Ooh, yeah. Ooh, what we got? Just a little one. Just a little scrappy do one. That's Rassy. Got a little cheeky ballon. There just seems to be quite a lot of small ones around here. Let's go and try a different bit of the reef, I reckon. Not a monster, but they're getting bigger. The reason why I'm using the jig instead of this is because I am holding out hope there might be a little codling down there. I think I stand more chance with that jig than I do with the, the little soft, blade, soft baits. 
do one drift with a jig and then we'll do one drift with that, them little bits. He's like a goldfish, that one. Sorry about that. Currently in 26 metres of water. Got it. I do love this about Ras. No two the same, is there? That one, he's got a lot of blue in him. that five six be able to do this drift for maybe another five minutes until we get too deep we're in 29 meters now oh, I've got you. another one and another different color try it this time with these I don't know how many rats, I don't know how many rats I caught with that little jig, but I know it did all right. All I've done is I've looped back round and I'm running almost the exact same drift as what I did before. About five metres away from it. Got you. Ooh. This lad must have just had his Weetabix this morning. He scrapped well above his weight. A very, very pale one. Can I have him back? Do I get him back? Brown one. That was the pretty lad I was looking for. Stunning fish, aren't they? And these are also no truth the same. All the tail markings that I've seen them have always been different. Male cuckoo wrasse. Got you. And there we are, there's the other half of the duo, there's your female cuckoo ras. And another one for the soft plastics. Now you see what I mean? The tails are different aren't they? Colour variation in the tail is different. <laughs> I'm not going to mess around. The little softies have caught a stunning male cuckoo wrasse. That is a lovely one. And again, look, different coloration on the tail. He's a lovely, yeah, uh, a lovely stamp. They don't actually get much bigger than this. That is a really good quality one. Shadows of everything all over the place. <laughs> Try to find somewhere there's no shadow. There you go. Well, they definitely catch a cuckoo, Russ.
feels like another nice pollock. Yeah. Oh, popped off. Yeah, that was another pollock of about four or five pound. All I was trying to do there is <laughs> just try to swing it around this side of the boat, dropped a little bit of slack off and it took it. It's alright. I wouldn't have kept it anyway. If it had been a bass, I would have been a bit upset. <laughs> Where are we? Oh, oh. I picked it up right under the boat. <laughs> that fish picked this up right under the boat. I was literally just winding it in. I was winding it in so that I could go and move somewhere else. <laughs> and it's, it, it must have followed it up right from the bottom and thrust it right beside the boat. Yeah. Hooks out, fish is back. I think I've had enough. Yeah. I think I've caught enough. What I'm going to do is I'll swing back round and I'll drift over this reef with just the live bit out and I'll gut and fill it that pollock. And when I've finished, I'll head back. Now, because this fish was bled properly, there's no in it now. There's no blood in it at all. Just open the billy cavity up, taking the guts out. By bleeding it, you see there's, there's next to no blood left and you get real good quality white meat. Flip it over, do the other side.
There you go. Two fillets. See this. Well, you can see how much is left on that. You can see daylight through it. We boned them out so that there's no bones, no mess. Fantastic fillets of fish. And what's left there can go and feed the crabs. Yeah, I'm happy with that. Let's get all wrapped up, tidied away. Let's get ashore. I'm going to get James from school.